to start off with, do you mind telling me who you are and what you do? Yes, my name is uh, Mikkel. I'm uh, Danish. It's a Danish name, Mikkel. It's hard to pronounce in, <laughs> in English. Uh, I'm the CEO and one of the founders of Zendesk, a customer service software company. Okay, and I know that Zendesk really prides itself on its company culture and kind of looking after its staff and everything. What do you think is the most important factor to ensuring, ensuring that your staff are happy? So um, I think that <clears throat> when, when, you, when you talk about building company culture, I think your company culture is very much a reflection of your staff. So you need like a great team builds great culture. Uh, so I think we've been very fortunate and lucky with the people we have attracted to the team. Uh, and then I think we've done a few things like we haven't tried to kind of dictate a culture uh, or like a, a way of doing things from the management team. We really kind of try to, try to uh, define the company like a canvas. And, and we, of course, painted a little bit on the canvas, but we very much leave it up to the employees to paint the canvas the way they want to paint the canvas. And I think we've also been lucky in kind of attracting a very diverse uh, workforce. You know, have many different people with different backgrounds and different cultures in the organization. And that creates kind of an even playing field for everybody, a small United Nations. And that's quite impressive too, because I mean, you, in a fairly quick time frame, you went from just a few people team in Denmark to having expanded and now having your home office in San Francisco as well and a few hundred employees. What do you think was the biggest challenge with this expansion? So uh, growing up is, is hard, <laughs> as you know. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we, we moved the company from Copenhagen after bootstrapping it for a few years to San Francisco. So we've been in San Francisco for four years now. We were more or less bootstrapped when we moved there, so we didn't really have a staff. And we are now almost four, 500 people in the company. So that kind of crazy growth uh, basically changes your company all the time. We've added like a third of our workforce over the last six, eight months. And that just means that the company is a very different company today than it was just six, eight months ago. So you constantly have to evolve and you constantly have to change. And for, as, for me personally, as in my role as a CEO, my job changes all the time too. Um, and this is of course a big challenge and it's complicated. Uh, but by having a great team around me, I can, I can try to do it at least. Uh, and then it's also just a lot of fun. So talk me through the decision to go to San Francisco. Why, why did you decide to do it and why did you know that the moment was right for you to go four years ago? Yeah, so um, if, if we look back five years, that wasn't, very, that wasn't really a startup scene in Europe. Very, very small scene, not a lot of venture capitalists, very hard to raise money in Europe. And like, it wasn't really, it wasn't very interesting being a startup. You weren't considered like a real industry, a technology startup. It's like a, it's like a, it's very cute, like a little hobby. You're sitting there with your computer. Um, you weren't being taken serious the same way that technology startups are being taken seriously in San Francisco and Silicon Valley. So I think we had this dream of moving over there where all the action was. And like when we when we were able to attract money from uh, from the U.S. and uh, we we just made it possible and and we just execute on that and it's been a great ride. So would you think that that's kind of a piece of advice you'd give to other startups, like maybe not move over there until you have investment or? I think, yeah, it, I think that's a good point. I think uh, because it's not only you know the in, it, it costs money. Moving a company costs a lot of money, but. It's also about you need a local sponsor. You need somebody who can help you with the network, uh, with connections and, and, and recruiting the initial team. So it's very hard to do on your own. You need some good sponsors locally to help you with all of that. And you've now recently opened an office in Berlin. How's that going? Oh, it's, it's amazing. I love being here. Uh, and we are out at the factory. Uh, Simon and his, uh, his gang are, are building and it's just an amazing place and it's really really cool being part of where you can just like you can almost you can feel and you can see the growth every day and 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 you can really you can you're so close to kind of the core of the startup culture a lot of our initial early traction what was a lot of startups we've been the part of the startup story of so many interesting companies like 
company like Twitter, for example, started using Sendesk when they were like a handful of people. Groupon started using Sendesk when they were like four guys in a room. Dropbox, Airbnb, all these companies started using Sendesk very, very early. And we've kind of seen their growth from the inside and they're all still customers of Sendesk today. And that's just, that's just an amazing experience to have been part of that story. And as you grow, is there any kind of future IPO that you've got planned? So, uh, so we, we already talked about that like a year ago, that we definitely want to go public one day. Um, and I think that uh, we feel that we have something here that is very unique and that can change how businesses ch deal with and communicate with and basically change the relationship between customers and businesses. And we think that's a real thing and it's growing very, very fast, this market. So we definitely want to go public one day and, and move out of the parents' basement and be a, you know, a, be a strong, independent company. All right, Mikkel, thanks for talking to us, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay in Berlin. Thank you very much, Michelle.